Hey everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video, we're going to finish up our discussion on using the substitution rule. So if you remember from the previous video, we still need to talk about how to find the value of a definite integral using the substitution rule by changing the limits of integration. And also we're going to look at how to find the value of a definite integral for even and odd functions involving symmetry. So how do you use the substitution rule when you have definite integrals? If you've noticed in the previous video, we only dealt with indefinite integrals. So let's do an example of how do you deal with the substitution rule, but with definite integrals. So let's try the definite integral from one to two of Two x subtract four to the fourth power dx. So from the previous video, you would notice that the u is two x subtract four, the inside function, and that means that we take the derivative of the inside function and we get two, or that du is equal to two dx. So we also found out from the previous video we need to solve for the differential dx, and that gives us dx is equal to du divided by 2. Alright, so the goal in the last video was to change the integrand to be in terms of u, and the dx, the differential dx, should be in terms of du. But we haven't talked about the limits of integration. Keep in mind that this is x equals 1 and x equals 2 in the definite integral. We need to change this to also be in terms of u, where the entire integrand is in terms of u and du as well. So one way to do this is to keep the limits of integration, but keep in mind that they are x values and not u's. So this is x equals 1 and x equals 2, u to the fourth, and then du divided by 2. So I'm labeling these as x values because I want to remind myself that I cannot substitute in 2 unless it's an x value, or x equals 1, if I want to plug in 1. So now find the antiderivative of u to the fourth, where the variable of integration is u. Well, I get 1 half, I could factor it out, 1 fifth u to the fifth. And now I evaluate, because this is a definite integral, I use the evaluation theorem x equals 1 and x equals 2. Well, I can't substitute in these values until I have my u replaced as well. So this is 1 tenth. The u is 2x subtract 4. That's raised to the fifth power. And still evaluate at x equals 1 and x equals 2. So let's go up here. I want to figure out this value. Well, it's one tenth of 2x subtract 4 to the fifth when I evaluate at 1 and 2. So remember from the evaluation theorem, you substitute in the upper limit of integration first. So that is 2 times 2 subtract 4 raised to the fifth power. And then I have one tenth. 2 times the lower limit of integration is 1. So substitute that in for x and I need to raise that to the fifth power. So this first term just gives me zero because it's four subtract four inside the parentheses. So the value turns out to be 16 fifths. How did I get all that in there? Uh, let me start that part over. All right, so how do you use the substitution rule with definite integrals? So there actually turns out there are two different methods that are possible, and I'm going to show you both of them. 
The first method is to evaluate the indefinite integral first. And then you can use the evaluation theorem that we've talked about before. So here's a quick example with one method using the substitution rule. So you have the indefinite, you have, you have the definite integral from one to two, and the integrand is two x subtract four raised to the fourth power, and the variable integration is x. So if you remember from the previous video, we want to use substitution because this is a composite function. So let u denote 2x subtract 4, then that means that the derivative of the inside function is 2. Or, if you multiply both sides by the differential dx, it's 2 dx is equal to du. Also remember from the previous video, we need to replace dx as well as the integrand in terms of u. So solve for dx, we have du equals 2 dx. And that implies that dx is equal to du divided by 2. Okay, so the goal was to change the integrands to be in terms of u and the differential dx to also be in terms of du. So let's see what happens. We have the integral from 1 to 2, 2x minus 4 to the fourth power dx. This becomes, now this is where it gets a little tricky. The first method is you are going to keep the limits of integration, but these are x values x equals 1 and x equals 2 because the limit, because the definite integral was in terms of x's and dx. So I'm going to rewrite this as x equals 1 and x equals 2 just to remind myself that I cannot substitute in 2 or 1 unless they're x values. So I'm going to replace so I'm going to replace 2x minus 4 with u that's raised to the fourth power, and then dx is du divided by 2. So remember that the 1 half can be factored out of the definite integral. It's x equals 1 to x equals 2, and the integrand is u to the fourth du. Well, we can find the indefinite integral, u to the fourth du, because the variable integration is u. So find the antiderivative. So the antiderivative is one half times one fifth u to the fifth. Evaluate it. So now we're going to use the evaluation theorem. X equals one is the lower limit, and x equals two is the upper limit. But I cannot substitute in x equals two because I don't have any x values. I have to remember to replace the u with two x minus four first. So this is one tenth two x subtract four to the fifth power, evaluated at x equals 1 and x equals 2. Now I can use the evaluation theorem. I can substitute in the upper limit of integration first. So 1 tenth times 2 times 2 subtract 4 raised to the fifth power. Subtract 1 tenth times 2 times 1 subtract 4 to the fifth power. So the first set of parentheses will give you 4 subtract 4 to the fifth power the second set of parentheses will be 2 subtract 4 to the 5th power. Notice the first set of parentheses is just 0, so that's 0 times 1 tenth, 0. The second set of parentheses will be negative a tenth times negative 2 to the 5th power, which is 32 tenths or 16 fifths. So that's the area under the curve, 2x minus 4 to the 4th power from x equals 1 to x equals 2. We combine the substitution method and the evaluation theorem, but keep in mind, you need to replace the u back in terms of x's before you can substitute in x equals 2 and x equals 1, the limits of integration. So this is one method of combining the evaluation theorem and the substitution rule. So this is the first method on using the substitution rule with definite integrals. However, there's another method, and it's usually preferable where you change the integrand to be in terms of u's, you change the differential dx to be in terms of du, but you also change the limits of integration to also be in terms of u. So that way you don't have to worry about replacing the u every time before you can use the evaluation theorem. So here's the substitution rule for definite integrals. You have g prime that is continuous 
on a closed interval AB. You also have f of x continuous on the range of the inside function. So that's just because of composite functions. Then the definite integral from x equals a to x equals b, f of g of x, or f of u, g prime of x dx, which we know that replaces with du. Well, here's what the theorem sta states. So this is what the theorem states. You can change g of x to u as your inside function. You can change g prime of x dx to du, but you also have to change the limits of integration. So how do you find the new limits of integration? Well, you take your x value, a, you substitute it into your substitution to find g of a, and that's your new lower limit of integration. And x equals b, same idea, that becomes your upper limit of integration in terms of u's. So this is u equals g of b and u equals g of a. So let's try example four. Evaluate each of the following definite integrals using the substitution rule. So number one, we're going to look at the definite integral from one to two of dx divided by three subtract five x all to the second power. So this is one way you can have the integrand written, but you can also have it written this way. Integral from one to two of one divided by three subtract 5x all to the second, and then just move dx off to the side. That way the dx, the differential, is at the end of the integral. So now let's use the substitution rule. u equals the denominator, the inside function, so that du dx is negative 5, or du equals negative 5 dx. So now let's go through the next couple steps as well. Solve for dx, because we know we need to replace dx to be in terms of u's, du's as well. We know we have to solve for dx to get dx in terms of du. So solve for dx. du is equal to negative 5 dx, or that implies that dx is equal to du divided by negative 5. So there's the second part of the substitution rule. But now we have a new part of the substitution rule that involves the limits of integration. So we also have to change them. So the limits of integration. So all of this is scratch work for the substitution rule. The limits of integration were x equals, let's do the upper limit of integration, 2, and the lower limit of integration was 1. Well, we need to find out what are the equivalent u values when x equals 2 and x equals 1. When x equals 2, that means u would be 3 subtract 5 times 2, which is negative 7. That's the upper limit of integration because x equals 2 was the upper limit. x equals 1 will give you u equals 3 subtract 5 times 1, which is negative 2. And that's the lower limit of integration for the definite integral in terms of u's and du. So let's return to the original limit. So let's return to the original definite integral. It is integral from 1 to 2, 1 divided by 3 subtract 5x all to the second dx is equal to. So I'm changing the integral to be in terms of u, the dx to be in terms of du, and I'm changing the limits of integration to be in terms of u as well, all the same step. So 1 becomes negative 2 for u, 2 becomes negative 7 for u, 1 divided by u squared, and dx became du divided by negative 5. So everything in this integral is in terms of u and du. That's very important. So now you can find the antiderivative and use the evaluation theorem. So take out the negative 1 fifth integral from negative 2 to negative 7, 1 divided by u squared du. So this is not the natural log as the antiderivative. This is 1 over u squared is u to the negative 2. So negative 1 fifth integral from negative 2 to negative 7, u to negative 2 du. And now you can use the reverse power rule to find the antiderivative. So negative 1 fifth. The antiderivative is u to the negative 1 divided by negative 1 after you add 1 to the exponent and divide by the same value and evaluate 
but this time it's u equals negative 2 and u equals negative 7. So notice, I don't have to go back and replace the u now because the limits of integration were already changed. So this becomes negatives makes this positive one-fifth. The upper limit of integration goes in first. You will find out it's negative 7 to the negative first power. And then subtract the lower limit of integration, negative 2, to the negative first power. Well, that simplifies to 1 fifth times negative 7 to the negative first is negative 1 seventh. And same thing for the other one will be plus 1 half. Which is, after you distribute, negative 1 35th plus 1 tenth, which is 1 14th. So that's the area under the curve of the original integrand. So the big goal, so the biggest idea in this second method is that you do not need to replace the u in terms back in term. So the main idea from this second method is that you do not need to replace the u in terms of x's because you already changed the limits of integration to be in terms of u. This can have advantages. You're not substituting in these values into a complicated function. You're just substituting into a very simple antiderivative. All right, let's try several more of these. Number two, this time we're going to have the integral from e to e squared, one divided by x times natural log of x, but that's all squared in the denominator. But that's all cubed in the denominator, just the natural log is cubed. So, the next step, let's figure out what the substitution would be, because there is definitely a composite function here. So u would be natural log of x, would be a good candidate. Then, All right, let's try several more of these kind of problems. Number two. This time we're going to look at the definite integral from e to e squared of 1 divided by x times, in parentheses, natural log cubed of x cubed dx. So let's try a substitution rule because you have definitely have a composite function here. So let's you, let u be natural log of x. Because when you take the derivative, you get, and I notice that there's a 1 divided by x in my integrand. That's why I want to choose natural log. Or, if you have du dx is equal to 1 over x, you have du is equal to one over x dx. So now solve for dx. So du is equal to one divided by x dx. This implies that dx is equal to x du. So now let's look at the limits of integration. We're going to use the second method again for the substitution rule with definite integrals. We had originally x is equal to e squared for the upper limit of integration and x equals e for the lower limit. Well, using the substitution that we're applying to the definite integral, we are using u equals natural log of x. So u equals natural log of e squared, that's just 2, and u equals natural log of e, and that is 1. 
So now we've changed everything in terms of u, du, and the limits of integration in terms of u. So let's go back to the original integral from e to e squared, 1 divided by x times natural log of x in parentheses cubed dx. This becomes integral e squared becomes 2, e becomes 1, 1 divided by, I'm not replacing this x, but we know it's going to cancel out eventually, natural log of x is u to the third power, and then dx becomes x du. So I do have the x's cancel out, that's good, and I have integral from 1 to 2 of 1 divided by u cubed du remain, remaining, and that is the integral, same reason as the last problem, it's u to the negative 3 du, and I want to use the reverse power rule to find its antiderivative. So this is u to the negative 2 divided by negative 2 when I add 1 to the exponent, and now evaluate at u equals 1 and u equals 2. So if I substitute in these values, I'll have um, 2 to negative 2 divided by negative 2, subtract 1 to the negative 2 divided by negative 2, negative a half times one fourth because of the two to the negative two plus because of the two negatives one divided by two times one for the one to the negative two so this is negative one eighth plus a half and that turns out to be three eighths area under the curve of this integrand equals e to x equals e squared now, keep in mind, if you use the first method, you will still get the same answer equals e squared, but you will still get 3 eighths. All right, let's try a trigonometric function. So number three, the integral is from pi divided by four to pi divided by two of cotangent theta, cosecant squared theta, d theta. So you might be wondering, is this one of those antiderivatives that we can just find out immediately? No, it's not. We can find the antiderivative of cosecant squared by itself, but not with cosecant squared and cotangent multiple. Can you use a trigonometric identity? Well, you could, but it's not going to get you anywhere because you'll have a sine cubed in the denominator and cosine in the numerator. You're going to have to use substitution rule eventually. So let's use the substitution rule. Let's let then du d theta is negative cosecant squared of theta. Or du is equal to negative cosecant squared of theta d theta. So solve for d theta. And d theta is equal to du divided by negative cosecant squared of theta. Okay, so now let's find out the limits of integration. How do they change as well? So we had theta equals pi divided by 2, and theta equals pi divided by 4. So grab your unit circles if you have to, because we are going to use u equals cotangent of theta. u equals cotangent of pi divided by 2. So this is 1 divided by tangent of pi over 2. which is zero, and the other one will be u equals cotangent of pi divided by four, 
This is 1 divided by tangent of pi over 4, which is 1. So don't get confused with the limits of integration. It helps to write the top one, the, top, the upper limit of integration on top, the lower limit of integration on the bottom. I still have the integral, but it's going from 1 to 0. So let's go back to the original integral. We have pi divided by 4 to pi divided by 2, cotangent theta, cosecant squared theta, d theta. This becomes pi over 4 was the lower limit of integration. It's 1 now. Pi over 2 is now 0. Cotangent theta is being replaced with u. Cosecant squared is not being replaced. Cotangent theta is being replaced with u. Cosecant squared is not being replaced, so it stays, but we're hopeful that it will cancel out. d theta becomes of cosecant squared theta, so they will cancel out like we want. And I have the negative on the outside. When I factor it out, integral from 1 to 0 of u du. I don't know about you, but it's bothering me that the integral is going from 1 to 0. So I'm going to interchange the limits of integration and introduce an opposite sign. So this becomes positive 1 integral from 0 to 1 of u du. So this is the effect of using the second method of the substitution rule with definite integrals. I don't have to go back and replace the u after I find this antiderivative. And the antiderivative is pretty quick to find. 1 half u squared, evaluate at u equals 0 and u equals 1. So again, I don't have to replace the u. It's 1 half times 1 squared minus 1 half times 0 squared. That's just 0, so it's 1 half times 1 or 1 half. So that's the area under this curve, cotangent theta, cosecant theta from pi over 4 to pi over 2. Okay, let's try involving the substitution rule in definite integrals. So this time it's the integral from 0 to 4 of 5 divided by square root 6t plus 1 and dt. So I'll use substitution rule again because we have a, a, compo a composite function. 6t plus 1 is going to be the u, so let u be 6t plus 1, then du dt, make sure the notation matches the variable, it's 6, or du equals 6 dt. So you know the rest of the story, solve for dt now, that way you can replace it in the integrand, so du equals 6 dt. This implies that dt is equal to du divided by 6. And now I have to change the limits of integration. It helps to write equals 4 and t equals 0. So if t equals 4, u so 25. Lower limit of integration, it was t equals 0, so now it's 6 times 0 plus 1, or just 1. Alright, go back to the original integral, and we're going to see how does this change to be in terms of u's and du's. So I'm going to take the 5 out, it doesn't matter anyways. So integral, 0 becomes 1, 4 becomes 25 in terms of u's. I have 1 divided by, I'm replacing the denominator with a u, and dt becomes du divided by 6. So now I'll take out the 1 sixth, so it'll be 5 sixths as a coefficient. Integral from 1 to 25, 1 divided by u, du. So we've used the reverse power rule the last couple problems, but we cannot use it here. Remember that 1 divided by u, the antiderivative, is natural log. So this is 5 sixths
So now I took, so now the integral will become 1 divided by square root of u du, which is 5 and a half du. After I take square root and make it a half power and bring it to the top, so it makes it u to the negative half. So I have 5, and now I want to find the anterior of u to the negative half. That is add 1 to the exponent and divide by 1 half and evaluate at u equals 1 and u equals 25. So now we take the reciprocal of 1 half, 5 times 2, u to the half, evaluate it at u equals 1 and u equals 25. So 10, u to the half, 10 times 25 to the 1 half power, subtract 10 times 1. See what that is.